Hi everyone, we are glad to be back. This is Vanessa with Azing News. A far engulfs Attorney General's office in Indonesia. A fire burned through Indonesia's Attorney General office with flames engulfing one of the main buildings. Images from the scene show flames engulfing the sixth story in South Jakarta, with the Jakarta Fire Department dispatching 60 fire engines and more than 200 firefighters to extinguish the blaze. According to the local media, the fire broke out at 7.30 p.m. with no casualties reports and the source of the fire still not known. The incident has sparked concern among Indonesia social media users, with some speculating the fire may be linked to high-profile investigations that are underway. Setiono, spokesman for the Attorney General's office, declines to speculate on the cause of the fire, saying the Attorney General's office case files are safe as they are, are stored in separated area untouched by the fire. An Indonesia spokesman says that police investigate once the fire cooled down. Indonesian authorities say that no one injured in the blaze. A helicopter helping with the scuttling of the Wakasha ship after Maurice oil spill. Video footage shows a helicopter at sea aiding the scuttling of Japanese oil spill vessel, the MV Wakashio, off the coast of Mauritius. Mauritius says they start to scuttle the Japanese-owned bulk carrier that ran aground off its shores and spilled oil over pristine waters and fragile coral reefs. The ship hit a coral reef of the Indian Ocean Island and began spilling oil, prompting the government to announce a state of environmental emergency. Two of the ship's officers are arrested on charges of endangering safe navigation. Lawyers arrive as inquest into death of Irish French girl begins in Malaysia. Lawyers arrives at the Seremba High Court morning ahead of the start of an inquest into the death of 15-year-old Irish French girl Nora Kuo Irin. Kuo Irin's body was discovered near a jungle stream 10 days after she went missing during a family holiday at the Rainforest Resort. According to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mazlan Mansour, her disappearance from the resort prompted a massive search operation, which hundreds of rescuers scouring the forest surrounding the resort. She was found dead 10 days after she went missing. An autopsy found that she had died of internal bleeding and starvation, and ruled out of full play, but her family has pushed for an inquest, insisting that criminal elements are involved. The proceedings span two weeks. A total of 64 witnesses will be called to testify and assist in the investigation. The Malaysian inquest into death of Irish French teenager begins. A Malaysian court began an inquest into the death of teenager Nora Kuo Iring a year after her body was found dead in the Malaysian jungle. This is an inquisitorial process, the process of investigation. So Juan Manuel Skanda and the team are here not to prosecute anybody. So to the council here are not here to defend anybody who the disease is. When and where the disease died, how and after what manner the disease came by his death, and the the, the fourth one, the last uh, the last point is whether there is any person who was criminally concerned in the cause of death. The court heard testimonies from 64 of the 102 witnesses shortlist by inquest, says the coordinating officer Muhammad Iskandar Ahmad during the hearing which held over two weeks. According to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mazlan Mansur, Kuo Irin was found naked beside a small stream about two and a half kilometers from the resort. An autopsy found that she had died of internal bleeding and starvation and ruled out full play, but her family has pushed for an inquest, insisting that criminal elements are involved. The South Korea orders strike conductors back to work amid surge in coronavirus cases. The South Korea orders doctors in the Seoul are returned to work as they began a three-day strike in protest of several government proposals, including one to boost the number of doctors to deal with the health crisis like the coronavirus. The government now has no choice but to take necessary legal actions, such as an order to open businesses and to not put the citizens' lives and safety in danger. The 
We urge all trainee and fellow doctors to immediately return to work in case of medical lapses from the doctors are returning to work and damage caused to patients. We will take stern action based on law and principle. Trainee doctors are staged ongoing walkouts and thousands of additional doctors are due to stage a three-day strike. The strikes come as South Korea battles of one its worst outbreaks of the coronavirus with 320 new cases reported in the 24 hours, the latest in more than a week and a half of triple-digit increases. Lately, we have seen the patients aged over 16 account for about 40% of the cases in the metropolitan area and we have seen a large increase in the number of patients with severe or critical conditions which used to only over around 10. However, it has now increased to 43 today. It is a very important moment that we should establish a stable treatment system and beds for serious cases. The doctors reaches an agreement with the government to continue handle coronavirus patients but fail to find a compromise on the broader issues. Thailand students activists arrest on sedition charges following street protest. Two Thailand students protest leaders are arrested and charged with sedition in connection with an anti-government. Secretary General of the Free Youth Group Tatep Ruam Prapa Ikit Sere and his partner Panuma Singh Prom are arrested by police at their residence in Nontaburi province on the outskirts of Bangkok. Brandishing the Hunger Games inspired the Three Finger Salute, which became synonymous with student protesters nationwide. Tetep tells two media outside a police station in Bangkok that he and Panumas face many charges, with the most serious of them being sedition. The two are among 15 people arrested in connection with the July 18 rally that authorities say breach internal security laws and defy an emergency decree that banned public gatherings to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. TikTok issues new declaration made first disclosure of user data. TikTok's parent company ByteDance issues a new declaration and make first disclosure of user data on its lawsuit. ByteDance confirms will filing a lawsuit local time against the Trump administration over the executive order signed by the president Donald Trump banning its service in the United States. TikTok says it protects the U.S. user data by storing that data outside of China on servers in the U.S. and Singapore. It also says it's erected a softer barriers to ensure the data is held separate from ByteDance other products. The lawsuit notes that TikTok's efforts are already known to the U.S. government due to a national security review by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, while the committee ignored the evidence and positive solutions provided by TikTok. Meanwhile, TikTok revealed specific United States and global monthly active users' details for the first time in its lawsuit. According to the data, TikTok now has about 100 million monthly active users in the United States, up to nearly 800% from January 2018. TikTok says its daily activity users in the United States have reached 50 million. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, made good on his threat to ban TikTok, issuing an executive order that will ban the widely popular video apps parent company by Dance from conducting business transactions with other American companies beginning in 45 days. Plane bombings in the south of Philippines kill more than nine people. Military says a bombing in a town on a restive southern Philippine island killed more than nine people and wounded dozens among soldiers and civilians. Islamist militants suspect of being behind the attack. Two explosions believed to be homemade bombs are triggered within one hour in the main urban center on the island of Jolo, a stronghold of the Abu Sayyaf, a militant group that has pledged allegiance to Islamic State. Photos and videos provided to Reuters show the aftermath of the blast, which is hit to military trucks. Authorities say that the bomb are attached to the parked motorcycle. There are no immediate claim of responsibility and police says an investigation are underway. Abu Sayyaf was founded in the 1990s. It is active in the Sulu archipelago of Mindanao where hundreds of military are deployed to try to destroy the group which linked to Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. The Vietnam Zoo Max and Smith as virus keeps visitors away. As visitor numbers slump during the pandemic, Vietnam's oldest zoo is scrambled to survive, such as holding fundraising drives, cutting pay, 
growing fruit and vegetable to feed the animals. The more than 150-year-old zoo in Vietnam's commercial hub of Ho Chi Minh City see visitor numbers dwindle by March as the coronavirus outbreak unfolded. The zoo, built in the French colonial era, has to meet running cost of 118 million dong or $7,740 a day and ensure more than 1,400 animals are fed. During visiting hours, empty ticketing booths that racked up to 12,000 visitors a day before the outbreak. When the second wave of the virus happened, the zoo took a hit and experienced many difficulties. But all of the people who work here have one shared objective, to take a 30% pay cut so that the zoo can get through this tough time, as well as paying the cost to buy food for the animals. This is to ensure that the animals are still properly fed in terms of quantity and quality, to ensure they have good health in the time of this outbreak. Saving costs not enough, so the zoo called for donations. The zoo received more than $100,000, a sum that will help them to survive for another two months. I can see that the animals here are not having enough food, and I know that the employees here have taken pay cuts to help the animals. So today I came here to do the same thing, to contribute to improve the situation with the animals' food. The zoo is also doing things such as growing flowers to sell to the public, designing gardens for homeowners, and selling fertilizers to farmers to help keep the animals fed, and zoo officials hope that this will keep the zoo afloat. The Mount Sinabu in Indonesia erupting and spewing ash. The Mount Sinabu, a volcano in North Sumatra, Indonesia, erupts again and spewing a column of ash about one kilometer tall. A webcam video provided by Indonesian geological authorities shows a column of ash rising as Mount Sinabung rumbles in its latest eruption. Residents and tourists are advised to stay more than 5 kilometers away from the volcano in Karo, North Sumatra. Mount Sinabung has shown greater activity in the past month since a small eruption on August 8 and two other eruptions on August 11 and August 13, 2020. And that's all for today. We'll see you again.